Last night, the obstruction of, of justice investigation of the president by the special prosecutor, Robert Mueller, took on a new and dramatic dimension when The New York Times reported that the president ordered the firing of the special prosecutor in June and that White House counsel Don McGahn refused to carry out that order and threatened to resign if the special prosecutor was fired. Here is every word the president said about that important story today. In the Nixon era, that's what they called a non-denial denial. Join us tonight for an exclusive interview with his first public reaction to the report that the president tried to fire the special prosecutor is the author of the best-selling book in the world right now, Michael Wolff, the author of the New York Times bestseller Fire and Fury Inside the Trump White House. And Michael, uh, first of all, thank you very much for coming back. Thank you for um, having me. The, your book is filled, filled with versions of the president complaining about the special prosecutor, making references to wanting to fire the special prosecutor. The special prosecutor uh, has talked to Reince Priebus. The special prosecutor is going to talk to Steve Bannon, who you spent a lot of time talking to. Uh, the special prosecutor has been talking to many of your sources in this book. Has the special prosecutor reached out to you to talk to you about either the firing of the special prosecutor or any other elements of this story? He has not. And if the special prosecutor does want uh, to interview you, would you cooperate with that? Good question. And I don't know the answer, but I think that the answer is yes, because I have nothing to hide. Everything that I know is in the book. What about the sources that are that are there are many sources revealed in the book and there's many quotes that are attributed to people, but there's an awful lot of unattributed quotes. Right. If the special and prosecutor were to open this book and, and point to say who's the source who here. That? If it's a source that I can't reveal. No, I clearly would not. Uh, and, and you know there's no privilege there. You would have to, the, the special prosecutor could hold you in contempt and you could end up in jail by refusing to answer that. You know, I've had a lot of, a lot of threats um, <laughs> over the last few weeks. You know, we, we take them as they come. Okay. Um, the, um, I want to go to a passage about Don McGahn that's in your book because I have to say, for readers of this book, the detail that the president specifically ordered the firing is just one more little piece that fits into this story completely as, and the characters behave in the way we understand them from your book. Here is a reference to Don McGahn, page 212 of your book. McGahn tried to explain that in fact Comey himself was not running the Russia investigation, that without Comey the investigation would proceed anyway. McGahn, the lawyer whose job was necessarily to issue cautions, was a frequent target of Trump rages. Typically, these would begin as a kind of exaggeration or acting and then devolve into the real thing. Uncontrollable, vein popping, ugly face, tantrum stuff. It got primal. Now the president's denunciations focused in a vicious fury on McGahn and his cautions about Comey. And that's just Comey. So we can presume that something similar to that went on with Mueller, with, with the attempt to fire Mueller. Let me, let me give a slightly different context than, than the New York Times gives. The New York Times makes it sound like Trump thought about this, sat down, determined that this was, that he should fire, uh, that he should fire Mueller, that he should act on this, and then told him again to carry this out. And that's not untrue. But the difference is he does this constantly. Every day the president is saying he's going to fire somebody. Anybody who he feels is, has annoyed him, irritated him, gotten in his way, disagreed with him, is going to be fired. The, uh, the firing of Mueller was talked about by Trump, especially in this, in this June, July period, before his, his legal team really got in and, and, and took over. This became an obsession with the president. He had to get rid of Mueller. Now, but in obsession with this, this, this president becomes, instead of, instead of in order, it becomes kind of like wallpaper. Um, it just goes on and on and on. He repeats and repeats and repeats. And is it serious? Is it 
just just him um, uh, spouting off. Um, ultimately, that's what the special prosecutor will have to decide, and it's and it's a key key thing because the special prosecutor has to prove intent. If he's just a crazy person, which in part he is, it's going to be very hard to prove intent. So. Was there a moment in which he, he directed this to happen? Well, actually, yes, but there were hundreds of moments in which he does that and in which everybody sort of deflects. And equally, you know, the Times has McGahn threatening to quit. McGahn has probably threatened to quit a hundred times. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, what they say, and in, in e even now, McGahn would like to get out of there. They just can't find somebody else to replace him, so that they have to come and essentially each, each time beg him to stay. Uh, you, you have Bannon uh, in here saying, uh, quoting him now uh, and attributing it to him. It's, it's not one of the uh, unacknowledged quotes here. It says, Bannon saying to you, if he fires Mueller, it just brings impe the impeachment quicker. Was that the widespread view in the White House? T completely. I mean, everybody believed firing Mueller would be suicidal. And everybody, everybody had to deal with this every day because it was always fire Mueller. We got to fire Mueller. How can we fire Mueller? Uh, get rid of this guy. And again, this was kind of regarded as something less than real. It was just the stuff that comes out of the president's mouth uncontrollably and often meaninglessly. So, so in that sense, you're describing a workplace in which they don't take the guy saying this stuff seriously uh, to the point where they actually have to execute it. But if he pushes it up to an order, then they have to issue threats to resign. Y yes. Um, the question is, but even that, that that's, that's always going on, the, 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 the efforts to resign, because nobody wants to be there. <laughs> um, so it's, this, it's, a, it's a, a, a kind of, the New York Times curiously makes this sound normal. Even though, what even, do you mean normal? Well, they, they, even if it, it makes it sound like there is a man oh. who has th thought through something and made a decision. There are no decisions here. It's just blather. And when does blather, in, of course, blather can become a decision. The Comey firing, nobody expected the Comey firing to happen. And then it happened because he did it on his own. Mm -hmm. He just went rogue and suddenly it happened. So. I believe that everybody expected and continues to expect Mueller to be fired. But how that happens is a, it's a kind of a three-dimensional thing because, because every day he's firing Mueller. So how does it become, how does that go from, from this kind of, uh, you know, you know the, the president, presidential gas to actually happening. It's, it's uh, making that case uh, for, for his lawyers to try to make that presentation of the character uh, m is made virtually impossible because of his job, and meaning uh, a prosecutor and the people looking into this aren't going to believe that a president is just that nutty and flaky and constantly saying things that aren't real. I don't know if that's true. I mean, I think that is what is what Mueller they ultimately, that will be the ultimate question. Was there intent here, or, is, or was this just daily stupidity, really, incompetence, disregard? There's a, a passage in here about um, <clears throat> the, everybody in the White House believing that if the investigation moved long term into the Trump financial transactions, uh, that that would be disastrous. Uh, for, for the president, and, and the president seemed to confirm that by having that be the thing that made him keep saying, I can fire Mueller, I can fire Mueller. Uh, completely. And, and then at, at one point, of course, he says, um, he gives an interview to the New York Times, um, and, and he, he draws a line. He says, Mueller can't go here. Um, 
you know, you can't go into his family finances. And, you know, Bannon then pointed out to me afterward, Bannon makes, makes this noise. <laughs> he says, like, okay, let's just tell the prosecutor what he can't yes, look at. Yes, um, yes. Uh, so uh, imagine for us, as you know this character, you know this Trump character, and I think have conveyed him uh, better than anyone has conveyed him because you get all these dimensions that are very difficult to capture, all these weird dimensions. Uh, imagine him in an interview with the special prosecutor when the special prosecutor says, uh, why did you order uh, Don McGahn to have me fired? What does Trump say to that? I think it's almost unimaginable. And from the point of view of the, of, of, of the prosecutor, it's both, you're both going to get things that are immediately and stunningly incriminating, but you're also going to, re, going to have to step back and say, this is so stunningly incriminating that maybe it's not incriminating. Maybe he's just <laughs> and this is where we are, plain <laughs> the insanity stupid. Stu the stupidity or insanity defense. Um, I've been asking lawyers all week, what happens if uh, the president's lawyers convince him you cannot be interviewed by the FBI? Uh, you, you'll commit perjury. It'll be a disaster. Uh, the, uh, the special prosecutor then subpoenas him, and the president simply refuses to accept subpoena service, refuses to respond to a subpoena. Uh, is that imaginable to you, that the president would simply refuse to respond to a subpoena, <clears throat> and if he's held in contempt by a court, he will still refuse I to respond I mean, to it's, that? It's, it's never happened before. So um, so what happens then? I, I, have, I have no idea. I, I would say, just because I'm a reasonable person, person um, um, it can't happen and eventually he has to he has to respond um, you know and I remember Bannon saying you know he would go in there president would say I have executive privilege executive privilege and then um, and, and Bannon would say no you don't we we've gone through this 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 before presidents have to testify when they're subpoenaed I uh, put out on Twitter uh, invitations for people to suggest questions, and one of the biggest uh, questions they were suggesting was about Nikki Haley. Uh, let's listen to an interview that Nikki Haley did today that apparently was, uh, this part of the interview was provoked by something you said last week. Let's listen to this. He told the comedian and television host Bill Maher that he's pretty sure, not sure enough to write in his book, that the president is having an affair and that close readers of his book would be able to figure out who the president is having an affair with. So Wolf writes in the book that, quote, the president had been spending a notable amount of private time with Haley, that's Nikki Haley, on Air Force One and was seen to be grooming her for a national political future. Um, I don't think you exactly have to be Sherlock Holmes to figure out what he's insinuating, but I'd like to get your response to um, the, that insinuation. It is absolutely not true. It is highly offensive. And it's disgusting. You know, if you look at what my, and I've said this before, it amazes me what people will do and the lies they will say for money and power. And in politics, it's rampant. But here you have a man who's basically saying, I've been spending a lot of time on Air Force One. I have literally been on Air Force One once. And there were several people in the room when I was there. He says that I'm talking a lot with the president um, in the Oval about my political future. I've never talked once to the president about my future, and I am never alone with him. Do you believe that the uh, U.S. ambassador to the United Nations is having an affair with the president? Uh, what I know is in the book. What's your reaction to what you just heard, Nikki? I, well, I don't know. Who, I don't know who the reporter is who is. Um, in, in, in fact, making the insinuation. Oh, so you're saying uh, you invited people to read between the lines publicly. I, you read between and, the lines. And you're, if you I, saying if I knew it, if I knew it, I would have said it. And uh, is she reading between the right lines? The, that reporter who brought this question to Nikki Haley. And is she reading? I, I, I'm not going to go further than 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 what's in the book. Uh, do, do you think it's reasonable that that this reporter brought this question to Nikki Haley based on what she read in the book? I, I think all questions are reasonable. <laughs> That's uh, uh, so. Um, but but you did say you, you believe the president is currently having an affair, not in the book, but you said that in a in publicly. Uh, I, I believe the president. Well, I, you know, it's 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 um, what is an affair? <laughs> 
Remember that question? Uh, well, let's put it this way. Sex with someone who's not his wife. Um, I, I believe there a number of reliable and I would say authoritative people within the White House have, yes, suggested that. And Nikki Haley, in saying it's absolutely not true, it's highly offensive, it's disgusting, seems to agree that the implication is that it's her. She seems to be, yes. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, it you, it just, is literally I, what's, what's, what's in the book. Okay, if, you I, wanna, if you want to infer, I... Well, I do want to, I just want to clarify for the public record, you never actually said Nikki Haley. You never said not. any name. I and did so not. anyone who has brought Nikki Haley into this has done this through their own reading. Exactly. Uh, going back to the, the obstruction case with the, with the president, uh, as you hear these various scenarios being, being played out, uh, and, and you hear John Dowd, in one of the most interesting comments of the week, saying, it's not the president who's going to decide. I am going to decide whether the president agrees to do this interview. Do you think that's how this will happen, that John Dowd will say to the president, yes, you can or no, you can't do this? Well, I, I, think, I think he will, but this is, this is Donald Trump. Yeah. He will do what he wants to do. And it's very likely he will decide, I can go in there and I can charm these guys. I can, I can sell them. Michael Wolf, thank you very much for joining us again tonight. Really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.